I like using bar soap instead of a soap dispenser. It gives me more choice in the kind of soap I use and doesn't end up in landfill. Supposedly you can refill dispensers, but it isn't long before they become clogged and stop working. However, bar soap has its own problems. A wet bar of soap placed in a dish ends up sitting in water, turning the good soap into goo that you have to dispose of. If you put this goo down your drain, pretty soon you have to call a plumber to unclog your drain. Soap dish designers have tried to deal with this by molding features into the bottom of the dish. If these features are shallow, as in this dish, there isn't much room for the water to collect and you have to be constantly dumping it out. If the features are taller, the soap bar, which is soft on the underside, ends up being impaled on them. The bar itself becomes difficult to pull out of the dish and the features are difficult to clean. Since soap and no doubt soap dishes have been around for thousands of years, it would seem that every conceivable remedy has already been tried. But this annoyed me enough that I decided to think about it anyway. Soap dishes with features to elevate the bar try to address the problem, but just don't do a very good job of it. If we could elevate the bar out of the water and still have the water drain away and not have the bar impaled, we'd have a good solution. Perhaps bristles, as in this brush, would work because they're tightly packed together so that the bar isn't going to penetrate and get stuck and yet the water could easily flow between them. But this is a very difficult thing to clean. Something else that might work would be a tightly stretched screen like this screen for silkscreen printing. In this case, the water easily goes through the holes in this screen, but the soap doesn't penetrate. It doesn't get stuck, and the screen is easy to clean. This polyester fabric used in silkscreen printing is ideal. It's strong, the material doesn't absorb water, and the holes are the right size for liquid to penetrate. And it doesn't dissolve in lacquer thinner. Why lacquer thinner? I will explain. We want to take a small piece of it, like this, and attach it to a stiff frame. The frame is going to be sitting in water, and so we'd like it to be a material that's not going to be hurt by water. Plastic is ideal for this. Some of the most commonly available plastics, like styrene, PVC, and ABS, dissolve in lacquer thinner. We can cut a ring like this from an inexpensive, readily available styrene drain coupling. We can place the fabric on this ring and paint lacquer thinner around the edge. The lacquer thinner penetrates through the screen, but it doesn't hurt the screen. It dissolves the styrene underneath. The screen sinks down into this molten styrene, and when the solvent evaporates, the screen is firmly attached. I put my first prototype into a dish and used it for a few days. I wasn't expecting a miracle. I was just hoping that the water and dissolved soap would drain away from the bar so that the bar itself wouldn't continue to dissolve. As I had hoped, the water drained rapidly off the bar and through the screen, but surprisingly, there was no soap in the dish, only water. The dissolved soap separated from the water and went back into the bar as usable soap. This was better than I could have hoped for. This round shape is easy to make, but it doesn't fit a standard bar very well. This isn't a problem if it's sitting in a dish on a countertop, but it won't work in the narrow shelf in my shower, which is for soap. So I made a second version in which I heated the ring and stretched it into a rectangular shape that was more like the bar. And any place where I could put the bar, I could then put my ring. I'm going to show you how to make one of these. I'm going to cut a half inch ring from this four inch styrene drain coupling. We want the sides to be very parallel, so I, I want to make sure that I have a good cut line. Instead of trying to draw this cut line with some kind of instrument, I'm just going to hold my pen stable and rotate the ring around it. I'm not going to cut all the way through it first. I'm just going to cut enough so that I have a clear understanding of where that line is. On my second and third passes, I will cut all the way through. After a few minutes of cutting, I finally have my ring free. And I'm going to trim it a little bit just to get rid of this flange. If you want a circular dish, you already have your frame made. 
I want to make the rectangle. And when you do the rectangle, you have to use a form. The circumference of the form should exactly match the inside diameter of the original circle. Otherwise, you'll get distortion. In this case, to match the 4-inch grain coupling, the form is exactly 2.7 inches by 4.3 with quarter circle, 1-inch diameter corners. And I'm going to mold that now, very plastic ring, over this form. I'm going to heat it again in order to straighten out these edges. Now you can do this by hand. You can just push on it. But I'm doing several of these, so I made myself an outer form as well. With the outer form, I have a nice square edge everywhere around this thing. And in just a second, it's firm enough so that I can take it out of the form. And now I have my rectangle. No matter which form you use, whether it's going to be the circle, the oval, or the rectangle, after you are, you've cut it and molded it, you want to sand it so that the part that the screen is going to attach to is very flat and smooth. After a minute or two of sanding, we have a flat, smooth surface to which we will attach our screen. We're going to attach it with lacquer thinner. I put some in this container. The screen that I'm using is 110 mesh monofilament polyester. You can buy this material online when you by looking for the um, printing supplies for silkscreen printing. And you should call it mesh. It is not called fabric. So we're just going to paint the lacquer thinner around the edge. Just goes right through the screen. Doesn't do anything to the screen, but it dissolves the styrene of the ring. And then we're going to push the screen while we stretch it. We're just going to push it down into the ring. And when we're done with that, we're going to let it sit for an hour just to make sure that it gets hard before we do anything else. After waiting an hour for the uh, bond to harden, I'm going to trim off the edge. And now you can have a nice, clean cut. After I've trimmed the edge close to the frame, I'm going to run a little more lacquer thinner on it just to seal that edge. If you want to use a round soap holder in a dish, it's easy to find a good dish. But I couldn't find one that I liked for my rectangular frame, and a one-piece holder would be more convenient anyway, so I made my own out of redwood. Why redwood? It's easy to work, and it's not hurt by water. I made it so that the frame snaps in, so that I can dump the water out of the box without having to hold the frame in. This is another box that I've been using continuously for more than two months, and I've never cleaned it inside. All I've done is dump the water out. Occasionally, I want to rinse the soap film that does develop on the screen, just so that it will drain faster. And all I do for that is to run water on it, and let it drain out the hole. If you make a wooden box like this, you should be using a router. If you know how to use a router, then you don't need me to give you detailed instructions. But I do want to point out that this frame sits on a ledge. That elevates it so that the water can flow under the frame and out the drain holes. 